In this video, I'm going to be discussing some tips to help prevent your TPI two-stroke engine seizing. This is my 2021 KTM 300 TPI. It's done just over 50 hours now and um, the engine is running really well. Um, I did have an issue with the crankcase pressure sensor, which I replaced. Uh, I made a couple of videos about a modification I made as well. Uh, but other than that, uh, the engine is running perfectly. So I'm really happy with it. But if you go onto some of the Facebook TPI owner groups, you will see quite a few posts of owners who've experienced engine seizures. And I have talked to my uh, KTM dealer about this, and uh, yeah, there are some failures out there, but uh, the failure rate is actually fairly low. Uh, so the posts you're seeing are real issues, but uh, out of all the bikes, the chances of it happening are fairly low. But even so, I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, make this video and include some tips to help uh, ensure that you don't experience an engine seizure and help minimize the uh, chances of it happening. And the first tip is regarding cold starting. And uh, here you can see uh, the 2021 KTM 300 TPI owner's manual. And uh, there's a note under starting the vehicle and it says high revving speed with cold engine negatively impacts the lifespan of the engine. Always run the engine warm at low speed. And I think this is uh, super important. Um, I do know a lot of people um, have a starting procedure well is start the bike and start revving it immediately. And this can cause a lot of wear um, on the engine and uh, can result in, uh, in extreme cases of cold seizing. The reason this can happen is uh, when the engine is cold uh, and starting to warm up when it's been started, uh, the piston and cylinder can expand at different rates. And typically the piston will, um, because it's much smaller, will expand more rapidly than the cylinder, which is also being cooled by coolant. Um, so it's important to, on the initial warm up, to uh, warm it up slowly um, so that the uh, clearance between the piston and the cylinder um, remains good and you don't uh, warm the piston up too quickly, uh, creating a uh, very tight tolerance uh, which might result in uh, excessive wear or in extreme cases uh, engine seizure. And the manual uh, on the next page states that uh, if the ambient temperature is less than 10 degrees C or less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you should use the cold start. The cold start is located on the throttle body and you pull it out to introduce more air into the throttle body um, which will help it uh, start more easily under cold conditions. Then it states that uh, once the engine is warm uh, that you should uh, deactivate the cold start. Um, and I typically, um, on, on cold days, I leave it running for probably 30 seconds to a minute um, with the cold start. And once it starts idling, okay, um, I deactivate it and let it idle normally. And then I leave it warming up um, for a, a number of minutes um, before I go riding. Here you can see on my bike, I have a Trailtec digitally controlled fan kit, uh, which includes a uh, digital readout of the temperature. I find this really handy for warming up the bike because I know exactly uh, what temperature the uh, radiators are. So when I'm warming the bike up, I typically aim for 50 degrees C uh, before I start riding. Uh, if you don't have a uh, readout like this on your bike, uh, you can feel the radiators and feel how hot they are. And typically you, you'd want to wait until the radiators are really uh, getting pretty hot and uh, too hot to touch comfortably. And another tip also included in the owner's manual is to not open the throttle. Um, in cold conditions, you can have the uh, lithium battery voltage go low, in which case you uh, should try starting it uh, for five seconds and then wait 30 seconds and then try again and repeat that. But do not open the throttle on the TPIs. It will just make it more difficult to start. And then once the bike is uh, warmed up uh, to over 50 degrees C, uh, you can start riding it, but don't ride it aggressively initially. Uh, just cruise along and uh, let the bike further warm up and you'll feel it 
become more responsive and then you can start giving it some uh, throttle and bring it on the pipe and then ride it normally after that. And I should mention that all of the TPI bikes come stock fitted with a uh, th thermostat in the cooling system. Uh, some people like to remove it. Um, I think that's okay if you ride in uh, hot weather conditions. But if you ride cold weather conditions, I definitely do not recommend removing it. The bike will uh, take a lot longer to warm up from cold start, and in some cases may never warm up, um, and it could be much more prone to uh, cold seizure. So uh, think about that. If you're always riding in really hot conditions, then uh, probably doesn't make much difference. It might take a little longer to warm up, but uh, after that should be fine. But cold weather, um, I do not recommend removing the thermostat. The next tip is regarding the two-stroke oil system. So all TPIs come fitted with a oil injection system. So here you can see the filler cap for the oil. Uh, this connects to an oil tank underneath the rear of the gasoline tank, uh, which is connected to a oil pump, uh, which pumps oil into the throttle body and then uh, that oil makes its way um, to the engine through the crankcases uh, mixed with air and uh, then into the uh, engine via the transfer ports. So uh, it's very important um, that you keep this area of the filler clean. Um, if there's dirt around there and makes its way inside uh, when you remove the cap to put fresh oil in, uh, it can go down with the oil into the oil pump. And uh, there have been reports reported cases of oil pumps failing uh, due to dirt. So from uh, 2020 models, uh, KTM actually included a oil screen uh, before the oil pump uh, to help prevent that dirt uh, creating uh, failures of the oil pumps. But uh, you can help uh, minimize the chance of uh, any damage by wiping away uh, any dirt located on this area and looking down inside the filler before you add oil, uh, if there is dirt, carefully wipe it out. Um, and also inside the cap, uh, you can wipe away any dirt that's there uh, before replacing it. Um, so be very careful about that, it can make a big difference. But as I say, 2020 models should be uh, less uh, likely to have oil pumps failing uh, due to this issue. And then regarding two-stroke oil, uh, the recommended oil in the manual is Motorex Crosspower 2T. And that's what I use. I've had a very good experience using it in TPI bikes and also my car bikes. Uh, if you want to use a different oil, uh, you should uh, really research into that and look carefully whether it's suitable for TPI uh, injection bikes or not. The reason being, uh, different oils have different viscosities at different temperatures, and uh, that can play into uh, how much oil is being injected via the uh, oil pump. Uh, so it can make a big difference. So um, if you're not sure, I would uh, just use Motorex Cross Power 2T. And here you can see the two-stroke oil tank, and you want to make sure that you always have sufficient oil in there to complete a ride. Uh, the capacity is fairly large, so it will last uh, a number of rides, but it's a good idea to get into a habit of uh, the beginning of each ride check, uh, make sure you do have some oil in there. Uh, there is a sensor in there and a indicator lamp on the dash, uh, which will go red uh, when the oil level gets low. Uh, but this is super important that you do have oil. Uh, if you run out of oil completely and carry on running the engine, uh, the engine will seize very quickly, uh, so really important. So here you can see uh, the maintenance schedule uh, published in the owner's manual. And there's two items relating to the uh, oil injection system. So the first one is to clean the oil screen um, in the oil tank every 40 hours. Um, so this relates to uh, 2020 and 21 bikes which have that oil screen. The second is to change the oil pump and clean the oil screen every 80 hours. I think it's uh, quite conservative um, and especially as the 2020 and 21 bikes do have this oil screen in place, um, I feel the oil pump uh, should last significantly longer than 80 hours. Um, and uh, the next tip I'm going to give um, will help you evaluate whether you really do need to uh, change your oil pump uh, this regularly. Here you can see a copy of the owner's manual which describes the oil priming uh, function. And I'm going to use this by disconnecting uh, the oil hose from the throttle body 
and then uh, measuring uh, the amount of oil uh, which comes out in the priming sequence. Okay, so in order to uh, run the oil priming sequence, uh, you need to locate the diagnostic connector. And this uh, is uh, located underneath the ECU on uh, 2020 and 21 bikes. I'm using a GET ECU. Uh, the stock ECU is black colored, so it, uh, you just pull the ECU up and uh, this will be sitting underneath there. And then uh, it has this protective cap and you need to unclip that. And then uh, you need the wake up dongle, uh, which is included in uh, your folder of uh, parts with the manuals, etc. Um, before you plug this in, uh, to enable uh, the old priming sequence, you need to hold the uh, throttle uh, wide open. Okay, so here you can see I've disconnected the oil hose from the throttle body and put the end into my measuring cylinder. I'm using a five milliliter cylinder. Um, on previous measurements, I measured just over six milliliters. So if you have a 10 millimeter cylinder, that's pretty much ideal. Uh, the one I have, there's still enough uh, volume uh, to hold the uh, test amount. So I can calculate um, the amount of oil afterwards, even though it's over the five millimeter scale. Um, one important thing to note is that uh, before you start the test, you should check there's no air in the hose um, because that will affect the accuracy. If there is air, then you should run the um, cycle once to clear all that out and then do your measurement after that. Um, also, another important note is that uh, if you're using a GET ECU, uh, the priming sequence is completely different from the stock ECU. So with a GET, you need to hold the throttle open and um, it will keep running until you release the throttle. Uh, you can still do a measurement uh, using that. You just need to time like uh, 30 seconds or a minute or however long you want to do, do it for. Um, I actually prefer the stock ECU um, sequence because it, it runs for a set um, number of uh, pump cycles and uh, I think that's more accurate. So I've actually switched over to the stock ECU and I'm gonna be using that for this test. So I'm just about to uh, open the throttle fully. So I've got it open th uh, fully now and I plugged in uh, the dongle and I'm counting five seconds and then I'm gonna release it and you can see the oil pump priming uh, sequence started now. So you just let that run until it finishes and then you measure the uh, volume of oil at the end. So this is a great test to do at uh, regular periods to check the oil pump uh, is still functioning okay. If you do see a, a reduction in the oil volume, it would indicate there's uh, either a blockage or the oil pump uh, performance is decreased and it needs replacing. Okay, you can see it's just stopped now. And I'm gonna uh, take the cylinder out and measure the volume. Okay, so this is the oil I measured. And uh, as I mentioned, the measuring cylinder I'm using is five milliliter. And the five milliliter uh, mark is just here. So I now have more than that. And to calculate the volume I actually have, um, I can measure the height of the oil uh, using a ruler. So I measured that at 88 millimeters. And uh, I know that one milliliter is uh, equivalent to 14 millimeters. So 88 divided by 14 is 6.3. So I have 6.3 milliliters of oil. So that's my reference uh, going forward. I actually, off camera, I repeated it a couple of more times and I got the same amount. Um, so I know uh, this method is accurate and repeatable and I now have a, a good reference for um, future measurements. And I should mention that uh, it's better to have a smaller measuring cylinder than a larger one. So this one's uh, pretty good. Uh, you could use a 10 milliliter and then uh, read directly off the scale, but you, you really don't want to use anything much larger than that because the accuracy would start going bad. Uh, for example, if you had a 100 milliliter uh, measuring cylinder, uh, it would be way down at the bottom and very difficult to uh, measure how much all you have accurately. And the next tip is to perform regular top end overhauls. So here you can see a copy of the service interval schedule and it lists the uh, recommended uh, interval to change the piston as every 80 hours or every 40 hours if you use it for motorsports. 
and um, I previously on my car bikes used 150 hours and that worked very well. Um, I know for TPI bikes it is recommended to change the piston earlier than that and um, a lot of people are using 100 hour, 120 hours. So myself going forwards I will be using uh, between 100 and 120 hour intervals for changing the piston and I don't think uh, people in general should have any problems with that if they're using their bikes for trail riding. If you're racing hard uh, you should uh, change it earlier. And the next tip is regarding uh, the ECU map. So this is the stock ECU and uh, most users have no way of telling uh, what map is installed in it and uh, would need to take it to the dealer uh, for them to check with the dealer tool uh, to read out uh, the map version. Um, so if you don't know what map version you're using, um, I would uh, take your bike to your local dealer, have them read out the information, and uh, if there's an updated map which is recommended for your bike, um, definitely have that installed and use that going forwards. I know over the years uh, there have been multiple versions of uh, the fueling map and oil, oil map, and uh, it's definitely a good idea to discuss that with your dealer and make sure you have the recommended the recommended version for your bike. And the next tip is to have good air filter maintenance. Um, so you should uh, check your air filter after every ride. If it's dirty, uh, you definitely want to clean it and uh, re-oil it. Um, depending on your conditions, you could go one ride, you could go ten rides um, if you're just riding on your own and uh, it's uh, moist and there's no dust. So there's no particular service interval, but uh, you should definitely check it as a regular maintenance item. And it's super important. If you get, have dirt going into your engine, uh, you will have excessive uh, wear on the piston and cylinder. So air filter maintenance, quick and easy to do and very cheap to do as well. Um, I personally use Belray um, oil. I really like it. It's quite thick and uh, tacks up well. Um, so I recommend using that uh, if you can find it. Um, also recommend on the ceiling surface on the, underneath on the filter um, apply some uh, waterproof grease and also on the air box uh, on the ceiling surface apply some grease and that will help uh, create a really good seal and seal out any dirt or dust entering. So I hope you found these tips useful. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the video um, TPI engine seizures are fairly uncommon but can occur and uh, hopefully by understanding the tips and measurements and proactive maintenance uh, you can help uh, minimize the chance of your bike having an engine seize. If you do uh, experience one I highly recommend discussing that with your dealer. Uh, KTM should be aware of uh, any failure and in many cases if it turns out uh, that the root cause is due to a part failure uh, they will typically help out in the repair cost. Um, so it's definitely important they know about these things and it's very important for future product development as well. If they don't know issues are occurring, uh, there's a high chance that they won't correct it in future generations of models. So definitely discuss it with your dealer and uh, take it from there. But in general I think the TPI bikes have proven to be reliable for the majority of people. But I do think it's important to understand what issues there can be and to proactively uh, work around them uh, to help avoid any problems while out riding.